Hello. Check, check, check. Mic testing, one, two, three. Yeah? People at the back? Yes. So, how much are you missing out on today? You don't have to answer the question right now, but can I ask all of you to join me in some breathe in and breathe out exercise? Yeah? So, breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. One last time. Breathe in. Thank you. This helps me become my most authentic self. They say that authenticity is the best tool for storytellers. Now, being authentic, right? That is what we said. Um, many, many of you sitting here might think that in the life of a professional storyteller in this digital world, we have to constantly engage with the audience by sharing stories. But this engagement sometimes comes at the cost of losing out on ourselves. In my last 30 years as an actor, corporate professional, voice theater artist, trainer, marketer, and a children's storyteller, there's only one fundamental rule that I wake up to every day. You are as good as your next authentic storytelling session. And today, I am going to share with you what storytelling did for me. Hi, my name is Janaki Sabesh and I am going to try as much as I aspire to, to make the next 15 minutes of your time worthwhile for you, my audience. The art of storytelling allows us to connect with each other, isn't it? The art of storytelling um, makes all of us become the best version of ourselves. When we immerse ourselves in a story structure with relatable characters, we experience joy, excitement, wonder. Ironic that connecting with children's tales, with seemingly childish characters and plot points, is the easiest way to find the real you. Storytelling is a simple and elegant tool to connect with the real self. So, it was a uh, another day in a space uh, which was uh, uh, in Chennai and uh, I was getting ready to perform three of my authored stories in this space. Now, I was walking up and down and I was getting my, uh, you know, stories in my head all together and I was also doing my voice exercises and hitting those audio notes and I waited for the audience. The audience started coming in one by one, children, parents, grandparents, many children. And of that, there was this little boy, about three and a half years old. He came and sat right in front of me, almost under me. And there was only one word to explain the expression on his face, sheer boredom. Well, that's two words. The Organizers introduced me, and uh, after the introductions and all were done, I decided to zone in my audience into the zone of listening. I always do that. I, I do a lot of refrains and uh, to spruce up the energy in the room. Why don't I show you? Okay, so it goes like, kokara, 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 ko. If I say that, you have to say, titira, 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 to. Got it? So let me try. Kokara, 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 ko. Energy, energy. Kokara, 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 ko. Titira, 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 to. Wonderful. So just like this, the audience was now in the zone of listening, and I started. And I said, once upon a time, this little boy who was bored had got up and promptly cupped his palm on my mouth and said podum, which meant enough in Tamil. The 
audience was shocked. So was I. There were some nervous chuckles. Nothing in my rehearsals had prepared me for a moment like this. Maybe this boy had heard once upon a time, once too many times to his liking. The very embarrassed father got up and he quickly took this boy and took him to a Lego set which was right there besides me. Thank God for that. And the next one minute, the father and I started telling him that he can just play with the Lego set. I even told him, you just play with the Lego set. You don't have to listen to me. He didn't even react. He just kept to that Lego set and uh, the father kind of settled him and he went back to his seat and I was a little more relaxed. The audience was also relaxed and I felt bad. I, I was certain that this boy was going to miss out on the entire show. Anyway, I then said, I looked at my audience and I said, let me start with my first story. The title of my first story was The Jungle Storytelling Festival. It was the story about a storytelling festival that was happening in the jungle. And every single animal was rehearsing for it. And just then, Ostru the ostrich came and told the officiating squirry, squirrel, saying, can I also tell my story? And squirry with the monkey and the parrot made fun of Ostru and said, no, <laughs> you don't have to come and talk, you just come and listen. Ostru felt very sad, upset. But then he said, okay then, I'll go and listen. But where there is a story, there is a way. With the help of Mama Mouse and her two children, they sang this happy song to cheer Ostru's mood and it went something like this. It's a happy, hap, happy song. Let's all sing along. It's a happy, hap, happy song. Let's all sing along. And Ostru found a way. He sang along and he sang his story at the Jungle Storytelling Festival. And it was a happy ending at the Storytelling Festival. The audience, pretty much like you, were very generous with their applause. And I was so thrilled. Children started asking me questions. Did Ostru overcome his stammer? Did Ostru become the king of the jungle? <laughs> and I tried to the best of my ability to answer each of these questions. I had not paid too much heed to this boy with the Lego set, but I couldn't help glance that he had given me the privilege of one year and a wry smile while assembling the logs and muttering under his breath, it's a happy, happy, happy song. Let's all sing along. I smiled, happy that he had not missed out entirely. And I went back to my second story. The second story was about Appu the Thirsty Crow. Now Appu and Ammu were these two naughty crows who were tired of listening to their grandfather saying the same old thirsty crow story again and again. They wanted a new story. And one day they did something that they shouldn't. They left the tree for an adventure and they flew high and high and they got caught in a very difficult situation. But to their surprise, to their amazement, someone who they considered their enemy, Miku the mouse, came and helped them out of this difficult situation, fostering a new relationship, a new friendship. And as Appu and Amu flew back to their tree, they had a new thirsty crow story. For Appu and Amu's story, this boy gave me the privilege of two ears and two eyes peering and darting with every move of Appu and Amu. As Appu and Amu were finding their own story, it was almost as if this boy was trying to find his own. I egged him to join the rapturous crowd, but he wouldn't budge. He didn't feel like reacting in a way that the other audience, he didn't feel the pressure of reacting in a similar manner. I left it and I turned to my last story. It was titled Parties Rastam, which I co-authored with my daughter. Party meaning grandmother in Tamil. Malli was this little girl 
who loved spending her weekends with her party. Weekends with party meant sharing stories, solving Sudoku puzzles, and party would always indulge her in an elaborate head massage, oil head massage. She loved it. But the highlight of spending weekends with party was party's rasam. Party would take this tin vessel, which is called ea chumbal, and make this amazing rasam. And as she made the rasam, and as the smell wafted from the kitchen to the dining table, where Malli would be sitting with a plate, with a volcano of rice, hot steaming rice, and waited for party to come, and gently ladle the rasam with generous dollops of ghee, she would squeal with delight. Party, you're the best rasam maker. Teach me how to make it, please. And party would always say, someday, Malli, someday. But that day, never came because party was soon a memory. How could Malli find a piece of her grandmother to hold on to? Through a series of events that unfolded, she found the most precious way to hold on to party's memory through her party's rasam recipe, which was now Malli's recipe. For the last story, the audience was very quiet. It was not a story where an ostrich overcame his stammer. It was not a story about an adventure by two pros. It was a story which dealt with complex emotions like loss, memories. So I started prodding the audience. Do you like rasam? Does your party make rasam? Do you have a party who makes something else? And out of the blue came a voice. I love my party's rasam. The Lego was neatly packed, I hadn't even realized. It was the last tale that taught me the lesson. He had not missed out at all. He was engaging in a manner that was most authentic to him. He taught me a very different tale of how audience can be engaged from the normal how an audience should be engaged, and that shook me to my core. As the audience started telling their customary goodbyes, some even took the autographed copies of my books, this boy, there was nothing on his face. No, no thank you, nothing. He just got up, he went with his parents up to the exit door, didn't even say goodbye, but something happened. As if he had forgotten something, he turned, he came, and gave me a tight hug. Why? Because he felt like. He felt joy, and he felt like sharing it with me. As the room emptied out, I was again reminded of the power of authenticity in storytelling. It is that authenticity is not just a tool for storytellers, it is a way of life for every living being. This boy with the Lego set influenced my idea of authenticity. He taught me that it was okay to engage in an authentic manner, authentic to what he felt at that moment. And he taught me in that big dialogue of storytelling, that it was not enough for a storyteller to be authentic, so should the audience. Every mundane story can become magical if you incorporate authenticity in it. Whatever you may do in life, you are ultimately the storyteller who should have an inherent sense of authenticity in every story you share. When you choose authenticity, Whatever you do is not a compromise. It is a creative challenge which is worth your time and energy. When you're authentic, you will not dwell on what ifs. When you're authentic, you will know when to step forward, but most importantly, when to step back. In effect, it is better to miss out on everything that we share on digital stories out there in exchange for not missing out on yourself.
So what did you miss out on today? Thank you.